So I had missed this to include when I uh, put out Revelation 3's letter to the Church of the Laodiceans. Revelation 22, 17. This is the link between, or I guess it is the transition between, it explains the transition between Revelation 3's letter to the Church of the Laodiceans and Revelation 4's heavenly throne room. Jesus is described in four different ways in the letter to the church of the Laodiceans. Jesus as creator, Jesus as savior, Jesus as the second Adam, and Jesus as the husband in the marriage covenant. The husband, the bridegroom, comes for the bride. That is John 14. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. In the steps of the ancient Jewish wedding ceremony that John the Revelator puts in his, uh, his gospel of John, that John 14, 1 through 3, Jesus' words, actually encompass three different points of the steps of the ancient Jewish wedding ceremony. The bridegroom leaving to prepare the wedding chamber, the bridegroom coming for the bride, and him taking her back to the wedding chamber, which begins the seven days in the wedding chamber. What you see is the transition in Revelation 4 to the bridegroom having come for the bride, and she is shown pictured in the wedding chamber by the 24 elders, who are another facet of what the bride represents, and that is 1 Peter 2's royal priesthood. The kings and priests were already spoken of in Revelation 1, that he hath made us unto our God kings and priests, royal priesthood. And you are seeing the redemption of the royal priesthood, which in other words is stated, the bridegroom having come for the bride. That is the transition between the Laodiceans and the, at the end of Revelation 3 and Revelation 4's heavenly throne room encapsulated in one verse, <laughs> Revelation 22, 17. And that is where I shall pick up speaking about, writing about Revelation 4.